Want you to be a pilot? I took a discovery flight with Faithful Guardian Aviation. Watch now what happens. The first 30 minutes we went through ground training, where pre-flight actions are discussed to mitigate risk and those included verifying the required documentation, the trainer and trainee state of health, the current weather, airport environments and runways, any external pressures, and state of the plane. We want to try to alleviate or mitigate risk as much as possible. Right. And that's ultimately the purpose of the pre-flight um, procedure that we're going through. This is our airplane, 75754. That's a beauty. A 1978 Cessna Skyhawk 100N model prefix N75754 was a lot of fun to pilot and ride. As we go to the inspection, we check the fuel, the oil, the connection of the controls to the aileron, rudders, stabilator, wheels and brakes, and everything else from the outside. So I'll go ahead and do the B4 starting engine checklist. So pre-flight inspection has been complete. Weight balance documents, performance are complete and check. Passenger briefing. So the way the doors work. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Seat belts and harness to seat to secure. Making sure that you rock back and forth on your seat to make sure it's locked. You don't want it to shift on you while we're on the takeoff. Okay. Circuit breakers are all in, all switches are off. Making sure that we have our alternate static source flaps are fuel set for both trim set for takeoff. Before starting engine checklist is complete. Engine start, this is a warm engine. They started it earlier. Make sure it's coming in full wrench. Throttle's a quarter inch. Open, brakes are held, clear left, straight, and right. Are you ready to start the engine? Yes. Alrighty. Here we go. Clear left, straight, and right. Clear, prep! Now the winds 
Okay, behind me and to the right. And the reason why I'm putting the airlines into the wind is so that we don't have the airplane flop. Okay, I'm clearing left, clearing right on India. Instruments, train coordinator went to the right, heading indicators also showing a turn to the right. I get it back on that set of man. And one thing you want to try to emphasize whenever we're taxiing and we're out and about on the airport, that we don't have our head in the cockpit. We want to focus on taxiing, keeping that airplane on the center of the taxiway. We also want to be looking up right traffic. It's like driving a car. We don't want to potentially go off the road or hit any other airplanes. We're always keeping our eyes outside. We're a little fast for a taxi, so I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. taxiway to do what's called a run-up, and we'll be able to see them. They'll taxi on past us if they're heading out to go take off again. Two. 
Yeah. It'll be between the one and the two, the spade hand, yeah. and this small team is going to be at the five. That'll be 2,500. That's the altitude we're going to climb to. Or, uh, altitude 2,500, we're climbing out to what's called the train yard. We're going to climb out to the train yard today. We're going to fly over the train yard, and we're going to make a couple turns, and we're going to fly over what's called the fuel depot, and then we're going to head back in here to Fulton County. <laughs> Um, engine on the runway, we're going to bring the aircraft to a stop ahead of ourselves, stopping the aircraft, telling Tyler what the situation is. If we lose our engine above the runway, we're going to head ahead of ourselves back onto that runway, pitching for our speed of 65 knots. If we lose our engine outside of the airport environment but below 1,000 feet, we're going to fish for our best, best glide speed, which is 65 knots. I'm going to look for my best field, which is the best field to land in. It may be a runway, may not be. And I'm going to do my checklist of time permits. We're below, below 1,000 feet. We won't have any time. If we're above 1,000 feet, we may have time. And communication. If we're still on the tower, we'll let them know what's going on. But if we're below 1,000 feet, we are flying the airplane. As pilots, we always fly the airplane. Yeah. It goes aviate, navigate, communicate. But aviate to number one. If we don't have time to do the other two, number one matters most. Yes. The so ABCs, airspeed, best field, checklist. In that order, aviate first draft. Any questions? No. Before takeoff, briefing is complete. Flight controls, we're going to check our flight controls. I want to check my ailerons first. I'm going to check my left ailerons. Making sure that one goes up. Okay, the second one's going to go to turn left taxi around for yeah. continue to your ramp. I'm going to check the elevator, which is going to be the highest. I'm going to pull up on the elevator, flight control, down on the elevator, flight control. I'm going to check my rudders with, with my feet. Left and right. Very okay, good. Flight control is pretty correct. Fire instruments, airspeed zero, attitude indicator is in line with the horizon. Yeah, this mask is killing me. Trust me, if I start in with the mask, is is it going to be? Altimeter is set within 35 feet of field elevation. Turn coordinator is level at level all in the center. Our heading indicator matches our known magnetic compass settings. Just slightly to the left. Then we decide that deal. Flight instruments are checked. Fuel quantity, fuel fuel. The selectors on both. Excuse me. Time is set. Set off. Matter where we are, we're on hold short runway two six for heading traffic. GPS is set. Magnetic compass and heading indicator are aligned. Engine instruments are in the green. Seat mm -hmm. backs are secure. And seat belt shoulder harness. So we're going to put these harnesses on now. And basically, what you do is you take the little metal clasp here and you slide it into the little the back portion and slide it into the latch. Just tighten it down there, pulling this harness there. Just tighten it, just enough. Turn to exit three, continue down two six. Turn left taxi right, alpha taxi right to ramp this frequency. All right, then I'll map up here. I'm going to pull short behind Romeo Lima, clear left, clear straight, clear right. Where are going on? This will we get ourselves in the sequence line here. I'm going to switch us on over the tower. Coming in the land right now. So while we are waiting here, we can actually talk about a takeoff today. 
So we're going to take the takeoff today, which I'm going to follow along with you. Okay. What's going to happen is we're going to align ourselves with the runway 26 down the runway. Right. As we get on the runway, the only controls that we want to use are called the rudders here on the feet. Right. So go ahead and put your feet on the rudders and feel that. See how you're moving. Right? You're right now. Use your toes to push the bottom of the pedals while we're rolling down the runway. As I add power, as we add this power to 1700 RPMs, because we have to check our pressures and temperatures, we got to see the end of the airplane how you try to turn to the left. Okay. We don't want to run the other way. We don't want to run the other way. We don't want to run the other way. So you have to add a little bit of the right runner to maintain that directional control on the runway. Now, as we're on the runway, you're going to feel the, ne the necessity to want to steer with the yoke. Well, we're not going to be so experienced, nothing. Yes, when you're, rolling, when you're rolling down the runway, we aren't going to be able to use the ailerons to control the direction. It's going to only be on the rudders. Correct. Right. So, when we are taking off, though, we do want to add a little bit of ailerons into the wind. The winds are going to be out of the south west today. So we're going to have the ailerons just slightly deflected into the wind. Okay. So that when we take off, as we begin to rotate, as we pull back on the yoke, on our rotation, okay. we don't, the wind is going to blow us off to the right. Gotcha. Because we're already decompensating for the wind from the left. What's the, what's the, the speed to rotate? We rotate at 55 knots. 55. So as this white needle moves to 55, mm -hmm. we're going to begin to smoothly start pulling back on the yoke, holding that back into the wind. Maintain okay. that rudder direction to maintain the center line. Okay. And it will begin to smoothly rotate off the runway. Now we don't want to yank the yoke back because then we could potentially induce what's called a power on stall. Okay. We want to just make a smooth pressure, pulling pressure on the elevator to bring that aircraft into flight. Once it lifts off, I hold that elevator there, I hold that pressure there on the yoke okay. to keep the airplane in that position. Right. And we'll start it again. I think you could back on the Okay. 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 And we're only going to steer with the rudders, we're not going to use the brakes. Uh -huh. That means you're going to put your feet on the lower portion of the rudder pedals. Only pushing on the lower portion of the rudder pedals. If at any point, when you add that power, and let's say the airplane goes out of control, I say I have the flight controls, okay? Okay. I will not let it get out of control, but I'll be right there with you on the flight controls. Gotcha. We're going to begin to rotate about 55 knots, start our climb out at around 60, 65, Initially, and then we want to climb out at an airspeed of 73 knots. So this airspeed indicator wants to be right about that white mark right there. Okay. And I'll be right there with you in the flight controls. Gotcha. This is the fun part. We could watch other airplanes do landings. Yep. If at any point I say I have the flight controls, you hand the flight control watch me, okay? Yep. Right turn approved, right turn approved, take up on the 26, go ahead, 7574. All that is, we're adding on, I'm letting off the brakes, I'm only steering with the right pedal. Right, 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 but that doesn't mean that they won't be once we take off. Signature Skyhawk 7. We're taxiing out here under the runway. We're going to kind of slowly bring on down. Skyhawk 9 Romeo Lima. 9 Romeo Lima. Skyhawk 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 9 Romeo Lima. We are on the center line for runway 26. You have the flight controls. I have the flight controls. You have the flight controls. So go ahead and put your toes on the brakes for a second. Hold the brakes. And add some power until it gets up to 17,000 RPMs. Push power in. Very good. A little more, a little more, a little more. Temperature pressures are good in the green. We're going to run off the brakes. You're going to need a little bit of right rudder. Put your hand on the yoke and your other hand on the throttle. Your left hand in front. Now push in full power. All the way in. Push it all in. All the way in. All the way in. There we go. All right. Maintain that center line with that rudder. Air speed is aligned. A little bit more right rudder there. Maintain that center line. There we are. As we continue to rotate, keeping that air on to the wind. Hold that nose 
Come on. Keep your hand in that flower. You always want to keep your hand in the flower. Push your nose down just a little bit here. You don't want to push too much, so we're going to essentially fly it. So your nose right on here. When you do the trim, you're going to help us out. The trim is going to help alleviate how much pressure we need to have on the yoke. We're just going to fly it out. We're flying an object off the nose of the airplane. And then fly too. You see how much ground is out above the nose right now? We don't want that much ground. Let's pull that nose, let's pull that elevator back just a little bit. Not that much. Maybe a little less. So you want to really raise up. See how the airplane's back to left? Raise low with the uh, just like that. Very good. All right. Now we're searching for the feet. We're going to make a right turn. So how do we make a right turn? Well, we roll it around. There you go. We roll into a turn. We always make sure we clear before we roll. So we're looking to the right. We're clear. Now someone rolling the here. This is our lower chest setting. Right about here, good. We're going to have fun. The nose speed is kind of just going down a little bit, so we push that nose forward a little bit. Okay, we're trying to slow down. We push that nose forward. We want to get too small that time. Gotcha. And the reason is we might actually have a child. Gotcha. So we're going to keep pushing pitch attitude. Gotcha. 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 Keep pushing enough ground over the nose. Gotcha. That means we're calling it. Gotcha. And then you feel the wind kind of push you back and forth like that, don't let it do that. Whenever it pushes you to the left, control back to the right. Gotcha. If it pushes you to the right, control back to the left. Gotcha. Keep that horizon just at or above that nose. Okay, so we're at 3,000 feet. We're going to do our after takeoff checklist. Gotcha. That's where that first speed is the X and Y at 73 knots currently. And we're flying out of our 1873, that's our up, the flower is in four, and the mixture is rich over 3,000 feet. So one thing I know is that is uh, hard to think about right now, but just as much as you keep your foot in the gas in the car when you're driving a bus, you're going to run out. There you go, very good job. How does it control your car? Just as much as you keep your gas, when you put in the gas in the car, you need to keep your hand on the throttle. Okay. So we're coming at 2,500. So I should bring your right hand. Put your right hand on the ground. So we're trying to see if we can change the So we can change the pool size. 10, 5, 10, 5, 10. All right. So we just push that nose down because we're on a million center altitude, right? Okay. And now we need to reduce the throttle. So we need to pull that throttle back. Not pull away, but enough to where this slows down. This comes out to 2,000 RPM. Again, so pull back, pull back, pull back. This can be a significant amount of power from there. There it is. tendency to want to have both hands in the steering wheel to when you're driving, but we don't have an accelerator on our feet when we're driving. So you have to keep that hand on that throttle. That is your accelerator. Gotcha. All right, so you see this train yard out there, right? Yeah, that's right. That's where we want to go. We want to fly directly over top of that. So keep us on this course right now, heading towards that train yard. I just kind of enjoy it. How are you feeling? This is fun. Is it good? Yeah. All right, so you see how quiet the airplane's kind of getting? Yeah. I see how high the nose is up there. Add a little bit more power. Add, add. Push in a little more power, sorry. Push in a little more power. There you go. As you push in a little more power, here, you can hear the wind building up, don't you? Yeah. So you it starts to get a little louder as you add more power. So you can see there's a direct correlation in a straight level flight to adding power and building up airspeed. Gotcha. So, if you are a straight level and you add that power, just uh -huh. listen to what happens to the engine. The engine gets louder. You can maintain that out too. Right. See, it's okay. If you add that power, it wants to pitch up. That's a direct energy. So, this is the measure around the airplane. Uh -huh. You know, wind's moving up. That's getting louder. That's because we're speeding up. I'm just kind of helping you out with uh, okay. that. Okay. You can also work yourself. That's perfect. Did so you see that water tower out there? That white water tower? Let's go ahead and turn left and put your nose on that. So one of the basic fundamentals in flying is knowing when you are climbing and descending. And you can see right now, it's getting kind of quiet. It means we're climbing and we're getting slow. So let's push that, push down a little bit on that nose. 
Very good. You see Water Tower over here, you're right? Let's go put him over there. Over there, right to the sun. Yeah, there he is. He's at Sun Visor. Put him over there on that tower, that Water Tower. Very good. You're making a coordinated control with a few ailerons, which control your wind, not your way, and the elevator. So, I'm going to take flight controls for a second. All right, shoot. We have these different controls that control up and down and left and right. So we put our up and down. We have the elevator, which controls our pitch goes down and our pitch goes up. So, what we need to say, we push forward on the elevator. If we need to lose altitude, if we need to gain altitude, we pull back on the elevator. If we need to roll left and right, well, if we need to roll left, we roll the yoke like we're steering. If we need to roll right to the right, we roll to the right. Yeah. So, how do we all correlate? Well, all of these different control inputs, as you combine them, help you in maintaining smooth, coordinated flight. Coordinated meaning we also incorporate the rudder. Rudder coordination is if we keep this ball in the center. Well, how do we keep that ball in the center? Let's say the ball is off to the right. That means I need to add the right rudder. I need to step on the ball. If the ball is out to the left, that means I need to step on the ball. So it's a coordinated flight of ailerons, elevator control, and rudder. Now, let's say we want to climb. Right? You have the flight controls? That's the flight controls. Let's go ahead and add full power, and I want you to push up, push it all the way in, get all the way in. And look outside. Look how that nose is going way up there. We don't want to push that much. We want to push right down there. Look over the horizon that's just broke your thumbs. All right, now the nose is going down, so now we're descending. We want to hold it right about there. We don't want it to go anywhere. We don't want it to go up. We don't want it to go down. We just want to hold it as best as we can to keep that horizon right above the cow like that. Cover the way. I'll As well. Thank you. Hi, vectors. Short instruction, 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 short instruction
Alright, I'm going to tower another round our way in. Four County Tower, Skyhawk 7574 is 8 miles northwest of the airport at 3,000 feet over the fuel tank. Army down, close south of the information light. Skyhawk 754, Fulton County Tower, report entry right down in one way two six. We'll report entry right down in runway 26, Skyhawk 7574. Alright, so now we're going to start our descent here into Fulton County. Skyhawk 7574, just do the Understood, Skyhawk 7574, thank you. Okay, we had an ad issue earlier before we took off, and I switched over to COM2, so I'll make sure to squawk it on our way in. Thank you, Skyhawk 7574. Alright, so now we need to... Skyhawk 7574, I wasn't able to make that your last transmission ticket. Alright, Mr. Jones, Skyhawk 7574. Alright, I'm going to take flight controls. Right now, we're going to take two six. So I'm flying in right now directly to the airport, and I want to start descending. So, how I descend is I start reducing that power. Oh, warm here, isn't it? Oh, turn here you go. I start to reduce the power to about 1700 RPMs, 15 to 1700 RPMs. Okay. And we need this trim here to help me maintain about 500 feet per minute. Jesus Christ. That's really power. Right here, six, two, four, five. As we're descending here, I want to make sure that I got the weather, which I did. Okay. I want to make sure I got the clearance into the power. Set nose down to maintain a 75 knot descent. 
We're going to turn to the right here. Looking out my window to see where my runway is at. And it's off my right side. Maintaining about a 500 foot per minute descent at 75 knots. 70, 75, one minute. I hope you enjoyed the flight, please give us thumbs up if you did, comment the video, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to receive notifications about our new videos.